Today, I'm going to show you how to select and change colors in Photoshop. Hey guys, and welcome to Flurn. My name is Aaron Nace, and you can find me on flurn.com where we make learning Photoshop and photography fun. And I'm excited about today's episode because it's really simple, but these techniques you can use on just about any photo. We're gonna show you how to select a color in Photoshop and then how to dynamically change that color using a hue saturation adjustment layer. Then we're gonna come in and show you how to use levels as well as a layer mask to either turn off or on your color adjustments on different parts of the image. And this is a perfect episode for anyone who's taken a picture of something and wants to change the color in Photoshop. All right, let's go ahead and jump into Photoshop. So now that we're in Photoshop, we need a great way to actually select out different colors. So I've chosen an image that has this, a large blue background and then these nice red elements. So the first thing we need to do is make a selection out of one of the colors. We're gonna start with the blue background. So we're gonna go to a new layer. Let's just go ahead and create a new layer. And I'm gonna go to select and then down here to color range. Select color range. Okay, now this is gonna bring up a dialog box. So let's go ahead and show you how this works. So here in the select color range dialog, I've got a lot of options. I can choose to select either my sampled colors, we can choose our reds, you can choose your yellows, whatever color you want. Skin tones usually does a pretty decent job of selecting out skin tones as well, which is very helpful. But in this case, I'm gonna select our sampled colors. So sampled colors, and now my, my choice basically is to use these different eyedroppers here to actually choose the color that we wanna sample. So I'm gonna click here on the background layer. Now, we can see with our selection preview here, I have a few different options down here as well, how I actually wanna see it. Grayscale is what I prefer, but you can also see black matte, white matte, and a quick mask. This is good, basically just showing you different ways of viewing the selection. It's not actually changing the selection at all. So I'm gonna to stick to grayscale, and with grayscale selected, whatever's white becomes selected, and whatever's dark is not selected. So I'm click on this background here, but you can see it's selected just about everything. So I need to bring what's called my fuzziness, I need to bring this down quite a bit so it's not selecting everything. But you're gonna notice that it's actually not selecting some of the areas of the background. Like if I click on this area of the background, it selects that and it's perfect, but this area is now not selected. So I need to use this plus eyedropper tool. So I've got the regular eyedropper, the plus eyedropper, and the minus. So if I click on the plus eyedropper tool, it's going to allow me to select different areas of my background and now I'm able to select out my entire background. You can see the entire background is in fact white, which is going to be selected. So let's hit okay. And now our background is a selection. So that was the hard part. Now all I have to do is add a hue saturation adjustment layer. So no, I'm gonna go up here to layer. We're gonna go down here to new adjustment layer and I'm gonna go to hue slash saturation. Okay, hue slash saturation, that's Okay, and now it's going to load the selection that I had active into my hue saturation adjustment layer. And now all I have to do is take my hue slider here and start moving this to the left or the right. And we can see because I selected out my background, now I'm free to change it to whatever color I want. I can change my saturation here as well if I want this to be you know, a little bit less color, I can go a little bit more color with it. Whatever I want, I can do right here with the hue saturation slider. All right, let's say we wanna pull it, I like a little bit towards green. I think that's actually pretty nice. So we're gonna turn that off and on, and there we go. That's how we select and change a color. Now we're gonna do the same thing with the reds. So the process here is basically the same as the background. We're gonna create a new layer. I'm gonna to go to select down here to color range, and then I'm just gonna choose right here on her shirt. And that's gonna select out our reds. Now again, it looks like I'm gonna to need to either bring up my fuzziness a little bit, to select more or grab my plus eyedropper and that's going to really make sure that I do a good job selecting out the reds that are in my image. Now sometimes you're going to get things like you know a little bit of hair or whatever inside of your selection. Most of the time that's okay because the selection is going to create a layer mask and you can always make things visible or invisible in a layer mask and we're going to be doing that in the next section. All right so that looks pretty good. We've got a nice area selected. As long as it's not selecting the background we're good to go. So we're going to hit okay there we go, you can see my selected selection is active. Now again, we're gonna to go to layer, new adjustment layer, and hue saturation. All right, and now I'm gonna do the exact same thing. Just move my hue slider to the left or the right, and it's going to change the colors 
of our reds. So we've changed the colors with one layer of our background and with another layer of our foreground colors. Really, really cool. So if all you wanted to do was change a couple colors, you are good to go. Now in our next section, we're gonna show you how to refine these layer masks a little bit and how to include or not include some of these color changes on your image. All right, now it's time to adjust our layer masks so we can get even more control over the colors. So we're gonna go ahead and click on our first layer here. Let's turn that off and we're gonna turn this hue saturation layer on where we changed the background. Now I'd like to zoom in and show you something really quick here with our shoes. If you hold Alt or Option and click on any layer mask, it's going to make it appear basically what it looks like in black and white. And remember, white is visible and black is not visible. Now you can see in this area, we actually do have some white here around the shoes, which means that this hue saturation layer is affecting what's going on here over the shoes. And you may be tempted to paint that away invisible. But I would encourage you before you do that to look at what the colors actually did in your image. So if I make this invisible, you can see there's actually a blue cast here on the side of that shoe. And the reason is it's picking up some color from the background. So if I make this visible, it's gonna change some of that color cast. You can see it here in the shoe. It's gonna change that, some of that color cast to the green, which is going to make it look like it's reflecting the background colors as well. So by selecting the color range, it's gonna select all the colors in there, even if there's a slight color cast. So sometimes this can be really, really good. Let's say you only want these color changes to be visible in one part of the image. Well, we're gonna use our layer mask to define that. So in this case, we can see turning this layer off and on, we're selecting out the shoes and the shirt, which is perfect, but I'm also changing the color of her lips and a little bit of her hair. Now, if I take a look at my layer mask, I'm gonna hold Alt or Option, click on my layer mask, and you can see, in fact, we do have some white areas on the lips and the hair. So if you don't want those areas to be included, just grab your brush tool, paint black right here on your layer mask. So that's all I'm doing right now. We've got a black brush and I'm painting it on my layer mask, and I'm able to see really easily what I'm actually doing because I'm viewing my layer mask specifically. There we go. Let's go ahead and make that invisible. And then we're gonna paint this black here on the hair as well, just to let that kind of fade out. All right, let's hold Alt or Option and click on that layer mask. And there we can see. Now we're changing the color of the shoes and the shirt, but we're keeping the color of the hair and the lips the exact same. All right, and that's all there is to it, guys. Selecting colors and changing them in Photoshop. Let's take a look at the before and the after. Here's our before, picture is totally standard, and here is our after. We've changed some colors in the image and then refined our layer mask to not include areas like her lips and her hair. Just remember these steps when you wanna change colors in Photoshop. First, make a new layer and then go to select color range. Then you're gonna to wanna to click on the color that you actually want to change. You can use the plus eyedropper tool to add more colors to that selection. Then create a hue saturation adjustment layer. It's gonna load the selection into the layer mask and all you have to do is move the hue slider to the left or to the right, and it's gonna change color for you. And to finish it off, if there are any areas of your image that you don't wanna include, just click on your layer mask and paint black with a paintbrush, and it's gonna make sure they go back to the original. Thanks so much for watching, Florin, guys. I hope you enjoyed this episode. It's gonna be super helpful anytime you need to change colors in Photoshop. If you like what we're doing here and you'd love to learn more Photoshop and photography and you want to hang out with me, just click that subscribe button on your screen right now. We won't send you junk or spam or anything like that. You're just going to be updated when we release new episodes. And if you have an idea for a new episode or a question or a comment about today's episode, just leave it right down below in a comment box. We got people clickety clacking in a way all day long answering your questions as well. Thanks so much guys. We'll floor you later. Bye everyone. Good little practice sesh out, some warm ups. This is how I warm up, in case you're wondering. It's gonna apply to just about all of you guys, which is uh, good. <laughs> um, yep, that's good. Break. Sounds kinda cool. It's free, we don't spam you. It's just, you just get to learn from us and you get to hang out with me make friends. Clickety clackety. I'm using a computer. Clickety clackety. Hey Kiernan. You wanna say hi to all the people?
Oh, yeah, did you see my buns? You got two buns? Come over here. So show the people your buns. Not those buns. <laughs> We're, I've never done two buns before. We're bun buddies.